this is Jen, and thanks for joining me for Five Cards, Five Occasions. Um, I'm actually doing six cards this month because um, I really enjoyed um, using these stencils, which is the um, challenge for the month is to use stencils. And I know it's July 1st, but this is for June. I'm a little late in getting this out. Um, the first card I'm doing is a honeycomb card, and so I'm going to use a honeycomb stencil, and I'm using this Close to My Heart stamp set with... Um, I'm only using actually the sentiment in the stamp set, which is sweet as honey. I'm using distress inks of it looks like peacock feathers, mustard seed, and twisted citron. And uh, I'm just taking my card panel and I'm kind of masking off where I don't want the um, embossing paste to go. Um, so that's what I'm using is embossing paste. It's translucent. Um, so I'm going to put the um, Distress inks down with my blending tool and put the embossing paste over, and you will still be able to see the color underneath. Um, you can also use several other things for this um, to give it kind of a texture or a raised look. You can use gesso, which um, gesso is kind of thick, so it, you might not be able to see the color underneath unless you spread it really thin. Um, you can also use texture paste um, or any kind of paste that you have like that to give it a raised look. The only difference is you might have to put the Distress Ink on after you let the um, medium dry um, rather than uh, like I did with this paste, which is I put the ink on first and then I put the um, texture over it. Um, but because this is translucent, it does, uh, it's, you can basically see through to the ink. So um, I'm just taking my spatula and I'm putting the embossing paste um, on over the stencil. And I'm doing pretty much the whole stencil across that little area. And um, I've let it dry about 24 hours at this point and you can see it's really shiny. And you can still see the pretty colors underneath. Um, so the paper that I'm using for this card is a Sparkle & Co. paper pad, the um, wood grain paper pad. And this would have been easier if I had actually uh, measured the paper out first before I did my stencil work um, because I had a hard time kind of trying to get this even over the um, shape I had already done with the stencil. Um, so if I do this again, I think I will start with the paper and kind of cut my shape out first and then mask it off um, but it wasn't too terribly bad so um, what I'm doing is um, I've just measured it out and I'm going to take some foam tape and pop up both the top and the bottom um, panels of pa uh, pattern paper um, so it gives it kind of a raised look and the honeycomb is a little bit recessed I guess so I'm going to go ahead and adhere those two pieces to the card. And then um, after that, I think I do the stamping. Yes. So I use my Hampton Art Stamp Perfect tool and some Versafine, I believe. And I should have stamped the sentiment first because I, I um, because it's got the foam tape underneath it, it makes it harder to get an impression. Um, so I take my Versamark or Versafine um, black ink and I go ahead and put clear embossing powder over that and melt that on my card with my heat tool. And then I was going to use some sequins and I got the sequins out and I didn't like the yellow I think or they're not really yellow they're more of a gold. I didn't like how they went with the card so I placed them all and then I took them all out. Uh, and I ended up tearing a little bit of the paper. So what I ended up doing was taking some yellow stickles and kind of putting that so it looks like honey coming through the wood. And then I put three dots of some yellow Nouveau drops and that finished that card. Um, card number two is going to be a sympathy card. And I use this diagonal stencil. And I am going to use some spray inks. And usually I have like a little center set up when I'm doing spray inks. But since um, I was filming this, I had to, <laughs> I just took some cardboard pieces so the spray wouldn't get all over the place. Um, so I taped my panel down to a piece of cardboard. 
And most of the spray inks I have are DIY. I do have some dilutions, but most of them I've made using either acrylic paints or um, Wilton's food coloring. And so um, I'm just taking those inks and I'm spraying and then I'm kind of blotting the color down. So I take several different colors, just randomly spraying them on. And this stencil is kind of uh, tacky on the back. It's not super tacky, but it's not like one of those plastic stencils that has no tack. Um, so I think that's why you can kind of see the lines. If this didn't have any tack on the back, it probably would have just blended all over the place and been pretty messy. Um, so what I do is I take my um, hill die or my curvy die and I do that, I, you run it through my embossing machine on both sides of the card panel. So it's got kind of a curvy side on each. And then I take two pieces of paper from this Recollections paper pad and adhere those to each side of the card and trim off the excess. And then for my, my card panel, I went ahead and I popped that up with foam tape and adhered that to the card. And I took a just a die cut that's in an ephemera pack and attached that to the card and put some clear wink of Stella. And then again, my, my sentiment is stamped with Versa Fine and clear embossing powder. And I heat that up. And then I actually at the end put a few drops of um, dew drops, the clear, on the leaf and the flower. And that finishes off the second card. Um, the third card, which is my favorite, favorite card. I absolutely love how this turned out. I'm going to use Distress Inks and Water. Um, so I have this kind of arrow stencil. Um, and my card panel, I'm going to take my card panel. And each of the stress, Distress Ink colors that I have picked out, which is Picked Raspberry, I think Blue Lagoon, and maybe Mustard Seed. And I just rub those along the stencil and then spritz it with water and then <coughs> excuse me, lay it on my card panel and kind of push it down a little bit. And then I take my paper towel and um, wipe off any excess and then dry that with my heat gun. And then I have this little box, of uh, this little cigar box of like smaller scraps of paper. And so I'm just going through that to try and find something to put on the top and the bottom. So I found this wording for the bottom and then I'm going to use this um, kind of wood grain for the top. So I adhere those and trim that up. And then for the pattern paper for the background, it's just kind of a piece of grid paper, um, scrapbook paper. And so that's going to be my base and then I will set my colored on top. Um, for the sentiment, I used a double fishtail dye and my white pigment ink and then my white embossing powder. And then I heat that up to melt it. And that's going to be my sentiment for the card. So I'm going to go ahead and take my black wink of Stella and get some out on my mat. And then I water it down a little bit so it's a little more liquid and I just take my paintbrush and splotch that all over the front of the card. And here's my pattern paper for the background. I'm just taking my tape runner and I will adhere that and then I will adhere the main panel on top of that. And I tried to make sure those little splotches were dry before I turned it over but some of them smeared slightly. Um, so for my sentiment, I'm going to take some metallic thread and just kind of uh, wrap it around a few times and then hold it together with a glue dot. And I will attach that to the card and then I'm going to go ahead and pop up my sentiment with a piece of foam tape. And I will attach that to the card. And then um, after I attach that to the card, I also use some ice stickles or I think they're diamond. They might be diamond stickles. Um, I just love stickles. I don't have any of the Nuvo glitter things, but I have a ton of the um, stickles. And so I just think they're so beautiful and they can add so much to your projects. 
So um, I added a few uh, drops of those, but you probably can't really see it that well um, on the card. But where some of the inks uh, smeared the black wink of Stella, um, I try and go over it with the stickles a little bit so you can't see that. <laughs> So that's what I'm doing here, and that pretty much finishes off this card. Like I said, this is my favorite card for the bunch. I think it turned out really pretty, um, and it's hard for me to try and keep cards simple um, with not a ton going on, and so I really like how kind of clean this card looks, um, and I actually, I just love it. So the next card is a kind of like a... Um, stained glass stencil I guess you could say. I'm using three shades of blue and um, a distress inks again and what I'm going to do is take the stencil and rub the inks in just a small area and then I'm going to spritz it really really lightly and run that through my Big Shot machine. Um, I lay my piece of card or my panel on top of that and then I used a shim to be able to get it to emboss. So if you have a plastic stencil that you would like to use as an embossing folder almost, um, all you really need is to make a shim, whether that's a couple pieces of paper or something that you have just enough where it puts enough pressure on that paper to get that stencil to appear. Um, so that's what I did. I really love this technique. I don't particularly like this card um, and actually I was not able to video the whole thing because of course if you've watched any of my videos you know my phone just stops recording and so that's what happened on this but here when I um, put the I think this is stormy sky distress ink you can see that embossing right there is from the stencil so it really does work um, I never would have thought to do that, but I saw it on another video, and um, and I believe it was a the Hero Arts blog. Um, she had used a stencil to emboss, and it's an awesome idea. Um, to finish off the card, I just put a few stickers on it. Um, one says exploring, and a few little stamp stickers, and that was pretty much it. So for this card, um, I have mixed feelings about this card. I like it. Um, I had tried it before and I messed up really bad, which is why I have this panel already made with the blue background. And so I'm trying it again. And so basically it's just a black piece of cardstock and a big butterfly stencil. And so I just tape the stencil down and I'm going to take some white pigment ink and just turn that over and press it through the stencil. I wanted the mottled look. I didn't want it to be a solid white color. Um, if you do, you could probably take your um, blending tool and blend out the ink so it's more of a solid white. But I really like the look of it with just that. And even the, the butterfly without any color I think would make a beautiful card. I do end up adding some color onto the wings, um, but not a ton, and I, there's still a lot of white. We have a butterfly garden here, and <coughs> we went recently, and the blue, uh, I just love the blue butterflies. Um, they're so beautiful, but they're so hard to capture, like taking pictures wise, because they never stop. They're just constantly flying around. And they're just these big, big, bright blue butterflies. They are so pretty. So um, that's why I chose to do the blue. And I let this ink dry uh, for a considerable amount of time. But still, um, going over on the marker, you can kind of see it picks up the white. Um, you can also use other markers. I'm using Tombow's and Distress. You can use colored pencils, uh, which would look fabulous also. But um, I just wanted some quick coloring, so I just took a few of the colors and kind of tried to make some shadows. So um, I just go ahead and color the first three. I leave the rest white. 
um, because I really like the way that the um, white pigment ink looks on the black background. Um, but I also really like the effect of the white ink on the black and then being able to color um, because obviously if you just had stamped it and tried to color or even just stamped it in a color it wouldn't show against the black background. Uh, maybe this Distress Oxides might, uh, but I haven't had luck with the Distress Oxides showing that well on black, and I probably just haven't worked with them enough. So after I get done with the coloring, I go ahead and take my Dream Sentiment, which is from a Close to My Heart stamp set, and I'm going to put that directly on my black card. And so I took some Versifying Black Ink, and I also took some blue glitter embossing powder and heat embossed that. And that finishes off that card. The last card that I'm going to do is a kind of a bubble stencil, I guess. Um, and I'm having, I have a yellow card base. This is going to be a shaker card and a white card panel. And I am going to be doing some watery coloring through the stencil. And I know that you can watercolor through a stencil more easily if you have some um, spray adhesive, some removable spray adhesive. Um, I don't have that, so I am just going to be taking my paintbrush and just directly going in the circles, being careful not to spread it over the stencil. Um, because if I do spread it over the stencil, the colors will bleed underneath. Um, and some of these do. Um, so basically what I'm doing is I am just taking my Gansai Kiritake watercolors. And then I also have one color, which is the pink, which is a Bria Reese, which is a new line that um, Hobby Lobby is carrying. Um, she has a lot of um, watercolor, liquid watercolors, uh, watercolors with glitter, she also has a lot of mixed media stuff, alcohol markers. Um, I picked up these because I don't have any liquid watercolors, and I just wanted to see how they worked. Um, and they, I think those is like three something for one little container. Um, so the colors that I'm using, I'm just putting randomly throughout. And like I said, I'm being careful not to kind of um, brush it over the stencil to make sure that they don't bleed too much. And so I go ahead and I heat that with my heat tool and let it dry once I'm done with the watercolor. I'm taking my scalloped um, stencil to give it a scalloped border. And then I'm also taking a circle stencil to use, or not stencil, die. Um, I run that through my Big Shot machine, and that's going to be my shaker card portion. So I go ahead and I adhere the um, piece of acetate. And then here I'm going to go ahead and take my foam tape and adhere that to the card. And then I just take some random sequins and things that I have, some sequins and some beads to use as a shaker mix. I don't know that they match the card that well, but it's what I had, and so it's what I used. Um... So I just took several different, and as usual in my videos also, you can hear the kids in the background. I'm trying to hurry up and finish because it's lunchtime, and um, I just wanted to get this finished before that because it takes so long to upload, especially the longer videos. Uh, at any rate, um, I just chose several different shaker mix sequins and beads um, and put that in my shaker window and then the blue piece of cardstock that I have I go ahead and attach that and then I um, adhere the panel to my base or I guess I haven't done that yet actually um, I stamped out two pinwheels one in a dark green one in a lighter green and I take my little hole punch and punch through the two holes so that I can put my tiny little purple brad through those so that the top pinwheel will move or the top portion of the pinwheel will move. And so then I go ahead and adhere the card base and I attach the pinwheel to the top of the card. And the stamp set comes with this little kind of like a 
stick for the pinwheel. So I go ahead and stamp that down the side of the card. And this would have been easier if I had done it before I had actually put in the foam tape and everything um, on the card, but... And then I'm going to take the sentiment and stamp that directly on the bottom corner. And the stamp that says, the sentiment is, you make my war go round. And then I'll go ahead and finish this card off. Um, I hope you enjoy the series. I really enjoyed creating it. And I look forward to a new challenge for the month of July. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a preview up of all the cards created. And um, please like and subscribe. And... Have a wonderful day, a wonderful holiday weekend, and a safe holiday weekend. Um, I will catch you later. Thanks so much. Bye.